Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you now in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to hear from you. We know that you have declared in your word that if we draw nigh unto you, that you would draw nigh unto us. We are here today to to be close to you and, and to hear from you. And so, Father, we pray that you will speak to your people today. Speak to us individually and collectively. Father, strengthen the man of God. Forgive him of his faults or his shortcomings and use him as your vessel. Empower him with boldness. Enlighten him with wisdom. Guide him with your spirit. And, Lord, prepare the hearts of your people that we will receive your word with a willing heart of obedience and that we will not be forgetful hearers of your word, but that we will be doers of your word. Speak today. Be glorified today. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Today our scripture text will be coming from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Verse 6 reads, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Verse 7, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I want to take my text from verse 6. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. My topic today is the power of your request. The power of your request. This text is primarily written so that you as a believer won't abandon your trust and confidence in God. It cautions us that worry, stress, and destructive thought patterns can veer us from one of the foundational Christian principles of having confidence in our supreme God. Therefore, life and the cares and the snares of this world can hinder you from approaching God with your requests. Again, the power of your request. The scriptures and the gospel of Jesus Christ are designed that you would come boldly to the throne of grace, that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. When you make a request of any kind, usually you have some level of confidence in the person or business to whom you're making the request. Usually, it is a requirement that you be very specific with the details of your request in order for the request to be carried out. What does it say about you when you face hardships and complexities and your automatic response is to make your way to God and submit your request? It says that your faith is wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up In God, it demonstrates that you know in the times of your trouble that the Lord God will hide you in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he will hide you and set you upon a rock. Oh, we were at the beach once and the waves were angry and roaring and the tide was high. So I climbed up on the large boulder, the large rock, and up there I was safe from the raging waves. 
I looked down the shoreline of the beach and some were sitting on the other rocks and some were even standing, but no one was in panic mode at all. We were at peace and still having a good time. Why? Because high upon the rocks, the waves could not meet us nor defeat us there. Every now and then you have to tell the devil that you can rage and act as wild as you want, but I'm going to carry my request, my worry, my sickness, my ailments, my disease, my concerns. I'm going to climb up on the rock of salvation, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, and submit my request. Oh, back years ago when I was a musician at the Providence Baptist Church of the greater Atlanta area, there was a song that they sang, and the lyrics, I would always remember these lyrics, and the song says that he is the rock upon which I can stand. He holds all powers in his hand. Heaven and earth are under his command. Great king of kings. The lyrics continue to say he's amazing, wonderful, almighty God. No other like him. In him will I trust. All of my needs, Christ I receive, great king of kings, who wouldn't carry your request to a God and a Christ like this. Now, according to this text, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, one of the prerequisites to approaching God with your request is to approach him with a mindset of thankfulness and thanksgiving. There's certainly nothing wrong with asking God for anything or to help you with anything as long as you are thankful for what you do have. As long as you are thankful for who he is and what he has already done just for you. Naturally, our human tendencies are to ask for things that we really want. And there's nothing wrong with that. But as believers, we must have a healthy diet healthy appetites, and a healthy balance of needs as well as wants and desires. In other words, sometimes your request should simply be to have what God wants you to have and simply be thankful. Now, there's nothing wrong with asking for a 2,000 or 3,000 square foot home. But you ought to be thankful for the 1,500 square foot home if and when you decide to submit your request for more. There's nothing wrong with a new job, but are you resp a responsible employee on your current job? Which means, no, I don't have all that I want right now, but yes and indeed, I'm thankful for the job that I have. You may be living in a one-bedroom flat by the railroad tracks and every time the trains come by the pictures fall off the wall and the power breaker is flipped but you ought to be thankful for what you have or yes you may be the only one still driving around in a 1971 Ford Pinto, but you ought to lean to the left and lean to the right and still be thankful for what you have or you ought to have you may have to put a wooden block in front of the tire to keep the car from rolling down the hill in the parking lot while you're at work. Now, let me tell you, if let me just throw this in the pot for you. Now, if your car keeps getting away from you, it just may be trying to lead you to the local mechanic. But you ought to be thankful for what you have. It is with this mindset of thankfulness that you prove to God that anything you ask or anything you request, that you submit to him that it is a healthy and reasonable request. Sometimes your request has to be refined and concentrated to the point that you say, Lord, I'm not in need of anything material. I'm simply requesting more wisdom. I'm simply requesting more knowledge, and I'm simply requesting more understanding. The scripture says, in all thy getting, get understanding. In other words, ask the Lord to help you understand what he has called you to do. Ask him to help you understand that sometimes you may be the one to have to initiate resolve in a conflict or in a relationship, and you were clearly not the one who caused the problem. Or your request may be, to help you understand the children you are raising and why, even though you've done your best, they still don't seem content and even want to communicate. Or yes, your request may simply be 
to help you to love your spouse and your family and the people the way that you should. Your request may be, Lord, help me to be what you want me to be. And certainly, Lord, help me to hold out until my change comes. The power that is embedded in your request clearly demonstrates to all that, yes, I depend on God to help me. Your request simply says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. Yes, your request signifies that some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but you and I will remember the name of the Lord our God. Not only will you submit your request on, only on behalf of yourself, but every now and then you may have to seek the Lord on someone else's behalf when they don't even know that you're praying for them, when they are not even aware that you're concerned and nobody knows about it. The scriptures in Matthew 6 says, go into your private chambers. Close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. The God who sees you in secret shall reward you openly. Proverbs 15 says that the Lord hears the prayers of the righteous, but he is far from the wicked. As I close, maybe your request today is, Lord, come into my life and save me from my sins. Maybe you are ready to honor Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want to tell you that whatever your request is today, God will honor your request simply because you acknowledge who he is. Someone said that Jesus, oh yes, is on the main line. And all you got to do is call him up and tell him what you want. Jeremiah 33 says, not only will he answer you when you call, but he will show you great and mighty things that you know not. Not only will he give you what you need, oh, but he'll give you some things that you want. And he will keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. And my final question to you today, don't uh, be hesitant about submitting your request. My final question is, have you been to Jesus? For the cleansing power. Are you fully trusting in his grace in this hour? I want to tell you that if you lean and depend on God, he will answer your request. I want to tell you there's power in you knowing where to go. Power in knowing that you'll serve a God who's concerned about everything that you're going through. The power of your request. Minister Jones.